Hey everybody, come along with us because we've got something fantastic in store for you. You've just seen the Sharks mark an incredible milestone, $100 million in deals and eight seasons in the tank. And tonight, they brought the tank to us. After you. Thank you. Tonight on 2028, the Sharks are circling and here they are. We're gonna kill you. You're gonna be my third husband. <laughs> <laughs> We're like this one big dysfunctional family. See what we have to put up with all the time. And they're ready to spill their secrets. What advice do you have to the person who's coming onto your show next week with a bit? What's the one thing you would tell them to make it happen? We like to win. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Tonight, why we love the show. Everybody can walk onto that set and actually believe they'll become a multi-millionaire and actually make it happen. The kids. It's a deal. Better watch out, Mark Cuban. And that made it America's spirit. This will be fun. <laughs> she says now. What's ticking in their heads as they make those deals? You've been willing to strip down in front of millions. But the idea sucks. Don't worry, it's only your biggest moment in your life. Thank their you greatest God. hits. Of course, I'm a genius. And their biggest regrets. Now it's time to talk about the companies that you missed. How you watching at home can get them to bite on your idea. Come to mama. <laughs> Are you missing out on good deals because of greed? What about the fights? Are they real or not? Lori, that is such crap. No, no it is not crap. You're not the guy to walk away and walk off. <laughs> so stick around because tonight we're all swimming with the sharks. Tell us all the down. What's up? Swimming with the sharks. It is great to have you all with us tonight, and more importantly, it's great to have the Sharks with us. It's so rare to get you all in one room unless you're duking it out. That's right, and actually, Lori Grenier is not with us tonight. She's actually out, guys, working one of her deals. Not yeah, that's what she it. says. She's a lot more dedicated than us. At any rate, this is a huge milestone for you. $100 million worth of deals made in the tank. Say some elephant. All right, David, we got, got a deal. deal. And I think a lot of viewers actually, some of them think this isn't your own money when you invest in these companies. Is every dollar oh, that yeah. each of you invests uh, uh, your own money? Absolutely. 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 Oh, it's yeah, just we that have Mark to. invests a lot more than the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Which shark has had the most hits? Oh, oh my Clearly. God. I'm thinking that's directed to me, you. boys and girls. The only big exit. The honest answer is none of us pay any attention to the other people's deals. We're so caught up. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how any of their deals are going. Really? Because I don't care. No, but the other real answer, all these men lie. They don't tell the truth. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> got a monster hit, and everybody's got some dogs in their portfolio. Let's take a look at some of those monster hits. Remember the ugly Christmas sweater company, Tipsy Elves? Welcome to the Tipsy Elves Fashion Show. This stuff is hideous. They surprised the sharks by selling wacky and clever holiday attire. Last year, we, you know, we had $862,000 in sales. And now they're expanding into new frontiers. We've created a lot of new styles and we're, we're ready to meet the demand this year. Tipsy Elves reports $40 million in sales. One of Robert's top investments on the show. Our company is Tom and Chi. Let's feed some to Barbara and see if she lives. <laughs> Barbara not only lived, she invested in the grilled cheese restaurant called Tom and Chi. Everything in my bones are saying this is a runaway hit. It's now expanded to 18 franchises across 14 states. Total sales so far? A reported $47 million. I'm John, and this is my partner, Wambi. It's been just 14 months since Kevin felt the love for the 3D greeting card company, Love Pump. We're tapping into something much bigger, the human need to connect. I was the most nervous at that point over any other time in my life. You What's yours, go. Barbara? Real estate, of course, but his is money. Oh. Since then, their company's reported growth from 300,000 in sales to more than 8 million. Kevin says his initial investment has been returned tenfold. He should be very excited. But you are the doctor of, I am the doctor of love. And this was the company that knocked Damon's socks off. Our company is Bombas, and we're here today seeking $200,000 in exchange for a 5% equity stake. In season six, Randy Goldberg and David Heath pitched their sock company and got a lot of heat from Kevin. You guys are still sock cockroaches. Sock cockroaches. He sure did. Oh man, this guy. I mean, Kevin like put our socks on his hands and was making sock puppet. That was good. I'm gonna talk to you guys and you're gonna talk to me. Damon invested in the company. Great decision. And in two and a half years, they say they've made well over $20 million in sales. Shark Tank is gasoline. It just lights up. Let me ask you about the notoriously bad pitches. My company is, uh... 
Can you tell us more about it? It's so easy. Uh, you, you can do it with your friends. You can do it with your child. He starts fumbling from the moment he gets out there. Mike, uh... Oh my God, I have a headache. I forgot my, you know, my, the first three, two to three minute pitch and just froze. What is your product? Um, we, we develop a brand of stand-up paddle boards. And they started making fun of me. I got called a nerd. I think you should stick with being a nerd. In fact, we heard Kevin say, don't worry, it's only your biggest moment in your life. <laughs> really nice of you, Kevin. I think Great it's line. good to put the pressure on because that's he's turned out shine. to be one of my best deals. You bet it was one of his best deals. While most of the sharks were out for blood. You have failed to get your message across, and I'm listening with both ears wide open. Don't listen to a word she said. Mark threw Stefan Arstall's paddleboard company a lifeline. I'm willing to give you $150,000 for 30% of the company. So let's do it. Woo! Whoa, did not see that I coming. I did not see that coming. The result? A reported $25 million in sales. He's returned my money, you know, 12, 15 times over already. Lots of money made for the Sharks, but what is the daddy of all deals? Two words, scrub daddy. Lori has this uh, this little sponge, and she's claiming, scrub I don't believe daddy. her, that she's doing $80 million, and that's what she claims. Right, so you I think believe, that, that don't I don't believe her, her at all. I believe her. Why would I believe her? <laughs> According to Lori Grenier, that number is even higher. In just four years, we have hit 110 million in retail sales. That would make this smiley-faced sponge the ultimate Shark Tank success story. It's like the post-it. You're like, I use it every yeah. day. Yeah. But Why remember, didn't I those are the best. The ones where I walk in, you say. Why didn't I think of that? Every morning I wake up with a new vengeance to make sure that no one takes our title as the most successful item in the history of the show. But there is another business nipping at its tail. Introducing the Simply Fit Board. When mother-daughter team Linda Clark and Gloria Hoffman pitched their exercise board to the Sharks last year, Gloria said she had $52 in her bank account. You look like two old men out there. <laughs> Linda, I'm getting dizzy. Stop that. <laughs> the team paired with Lori to create an infomercial in several languages. Par jour avec la planche Simply Fit Board. And distributed it internationally. Soy Lori Grenier de Shark Tank. Hola, soy Lori Grenier. <laughs> yeah, she may be selling it, and I don't know if she's making money. I'm sure she's selling a lot because the commercials keep on running. But that doesn't make it a good product. Sorry, Lori. Oh, oh, you're so jealous. So yeah. line is, Mark, is if she's profitable. selling it, how is it not a good product? You can do the hokey pokey for 12 hours a day. That doesn't mean you're going to be simply fit. The bottom line, it's been simply successful. When something changes your life, it's a crying moment. Simply Fit Board's reported retail sales have hit $96 million in just 15 months. And remember Gloria, who only had $52 in her bank account? She just bought a luxury home for her and her two boys with cash. It truly is the American dream. Overnight, my whole life changed. So what's so remarkable about Shark Tank for me is watching the level playing field of the show. There are no barriers to entry. You walk in, you make your pitch. But I need a little help. That's where you guys come in. Everybody's equal, and some people leave with their dream funded. You have a deal. And some people don't. I'm out. But you know, Elizabeth, it's hard. And it should be hard. But the great thing about us is I think none of us see race, color, sex. We just see, are green. these people adding value? Good idea. That carpet no. is the Mark ultimate equalizer. We just see green. Yeah. <laughs> Next, seeing red, their greatest misses. That's the deal I would have loved. I think we all know the sharks blew it. Why cry over spilt milk? And what's the biggest moneymaker they all missed? Who's there? When we come back. Welcome back. We're here with our sharks from Shark Tank talking about a lot of the big hits. Now it's time to talk about the companies that you missed. The regret. The regrets. The things you wished you'd invested in. It always in. comes to this. We wouldn't yeah. admit it. Do you not admit it when of you miss out on something? Of course you don't You don't want to be a loser. Why yeah, cry right. over spilt milk when you yeah. know there's another great deal coming yeah, to the Shark Tank? Who's there? One deal that should really hurt involved a company called DoorBot, a video doorbell system. Introducing the DoorBot. 
the first ever video doorbell built for the smartphone. The sharks went out one by one. It's really not an internet play, it's a consumer device. I just don't think it's for me. This company, instead of being worth seven million, can be worth 80 million, 90 million. I just don't see that progression. And for that reason, I'm out. But CEO Jamie Siminoff walked out of the tank and straight to the bank. Doorbot, now renamed Ring, is reported to be valued at $460 million, the most of any company to appear on Shark Tank. Over 100 million in sales, uh, over 1,000 uh, team members now in the company. Coming from where we were at in the garage. This is the garage. It's, it's a, a, it's a real car. It's a two car office. It has been a crazy, I mean, beyond crazy ride. One of the quote unquote misses of Shark Tank was Copa Divino. Uh, and a miss? I, well, for, a miss in, for sense, somebody, in yes. the sense that he made a huge. Oh, I'll believe it when I see it. Groans from the sharks because Copa Divino and its owner, James Martin, is probably the most infamous entrepreneur ever to enter the tank. America's first premium wine by the glass. His product, a single serve cup of wine, was a hit with the sharks. Wow, that's never been done in wine before, and I grant him that was a good move. I really like your patent. His personality, not so much. You could feel the antipathy through the TV set, guys. Oh, yeah, I mean, it was... You guys was, didn't like him. But we didn't respect him either. You guys all try to get into the I'm deal. in the wine business. The problem with him he tried to sell me on a winery. That is a bad that business. The first time. And when the sharks began to circle. Why are we even in the wine business? Why aren't we licensing this to all the wineries? Martin began to sweat. He was sweating. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that was the best part. I'll buy 51% of it for $600,000. Martin rejected the offer, angering all the sharks. I am going to go buy a $1,000 bottle of wine tonight, and I'm going to drink it because I'm weeping for the opportunity lost. Mm -hmm. This was your moment. Mm -hmm. You turn around, it's gone. But in a shark tank first, Martin returned the following year, this, way, this well. time uncorking some juicy sales figures. We went from 600,000 in sales to 5 million in sales in one year. I was right. We were building a brand. And ready to rub the shark's noses in it. Oh, I'm back. Are you kidding me? I thought we kicked you to the curb. James, <laughs> you're still dead to me. I had a hate for Kevin O'Leary at a level that wasn't healthy at all. And my opportunity to come back was also my chance to get the last word in and say, look, you blew it, but I'm also gracious enough to give you a second chance. With your investment, we'll drink these together and we'll toast to the millions we'll continue to roll in. You've tortured me so long, I'm gonna put an offer out anyways. The second time he came on, he stood out there and he knew we all were interested and he was trying to be too cool, Boy. too smart. It's a million dollar bottle of wine. He was up there thinking he's like he's the man. Instead of just taking the deal, Martin kept taking sips of his wine, playing coy. It was, it was a lot of money, we were negotiating and he's like, I'm gonna take a sip and what did I do? I'm out. Right? I don't need you that much. You screwed around. You're playing games, and there's nothing I hate more than playing games. And you came in and created drama. I'm, I'm really out. I mean, you just came <laughs> here to waste our time. I think we all know the Sharks blew it and missed out on the biggest opportunity they ever had, which was me. But with Copa Divino, nobody regrets that no, you didn't get no, in on that. No, no regrets. Can you imagine dealing with him on oh, an ongoing basis? It would ruin our lives, our happy lives. To date, Copa Divino says it has sold 38 million cups of wine in places ranging from convenience stores to Madison Square Garden, reportedly earning $12 million a year. Cheers. I didn't need the sharks. They needed me. The sharks needed me. They needed a really, really successful brand that went everywhere, and they didn't get it because they got greedy. I think in the second one, he forgot his place. He is not the shark. Yeah. We're the sharks. And then there was the dating app, Coffee Meets Bagel. Coffee Meets Bagel is here to profoundly change how people discover and fall in love. The three Kang sisters came into the tank looking to find a match. If I offered you $30 million for the company, would you take it? No. 
we got so many emails from people like, <laughs> are you crazy? You sisters are so crazy. Like, what are you thinking? What happens when you get turned down? Coffee meets bagel. Thirty million dollars. No, offer. that was not. No, that. Oh that no, a, no, that's a no, big offer. No, somebody's no, sensitive. No, no, I'm that not. That was a dumb deal no. for you. To okay, do. so first of all, thank goodness I stopped. Those sisters walked away. No, I sat there and I said, hypothetically speaking, right? If I offered you thirty million dollars, right? Would you take it? And then they went out and started doing interviews and telling everybody Mark Cuban offered them thirty million dollars and we turned them down. So yeah, we, there was no, I was there was no wow, chance. Someone's ego's hurt over oh. there. Oh. Mark, you're a little fired. Really? Yeah, clearly Mark is over it. Yeah. <laughs> One of the near misses for you, Robert, was Books, a yeah. flower delivery service that you passed on. We all passed on it. The Books company disrupts the flower delivery system by selling directly to consumers, cutting layers of middlemen in the process. Its founder, John Tabas, had a really hard time in the tank. All the sharks seem to hate the product. It's a flower business. I think it's a terrible name. It is six days to delivery. Whoa. Whoa. I'm out. In my defense, I think they did a bad job of doing the presentation. And they had astronomical numbers. They were doing two million a year, and they said next year we'll be 12, and then we'll be 30. And we hate stuff like that. We're like, ah, it'll never happen. If I want to send flowers to your grave, I have to wait six days. And I think, <laughs> and I think you died here today. I thought I did pretty well. Um, uh, you know, I, I, B plus, <sighs> brutal. We did a uh, million dollars two days ago in the day. So we did in 24 hours more than we had done in the entire year leading up to the Shark Tank. Fast forward three years later, I'm getting married and I get a quote for the flowers. I'm like, this is nuts. How can flowers cost so much? And I call him up and I say, John, Robert from Shark Tank, how can flowers cost so much? He said, come and see me. I'll explain the flower business to you draws it out for me, shows me what they're doing. I'm like, I love it. So I took part of their last round. We just raised $24 million. So you did wow. get in. Well, then that's the one I regret not doing, because that's the deal I would have loved. You, you, that's one of that's your regrets. One, yeah, that I and regret. most importantly, I saved a ton of money on my flowers. <laughs> well, thank God for that. Next, it's a deal. Grown up talk about baby sharks. I hate when we have kids yeah. on, and it's not good to negotiate in front of them. But can the sharks push the kids around? I was just like, uh, no. <laughs> like, that's not gonna happen. There's a saying, you're never too young to accomplish anything, but remember, a baby shark is still, still a shark. shark. So here we wanna know. <laughs> When there's a child or a kid who comes through that doorway, what are you really thinking in your head? I mean, are you rolling your eyes or are you thinking there could be something Oh, Aw, you're doing the aw. Hi, Sharks and Kyle Grace Cabot. Hi, I'm Madison and I'm 12. My name is Andrea Tso. I'm Mallory and I'm 10. Hi, we're the Inventioneers. It's great to see the kitties, but it's not good to negotiate in front of them. It can do long-term damage. Really? <laughs> I hate when we have kids yeah. on. What, what, why do you hate it? Because you can't be honest with them. You know, you don't want to give them false hope. So you can't just say, you know what, I know this is mostly your parents, and I know they're pushing you to do this, but the idea sucks. But sometimes we go, how old are you? How old are you? How young are you? How old are you? I'm nine years old. But one of those kids was Michaela Ulmer of Austin, Texas. In season six, her flaxseed and honey lemonade won the sharks over. She walks in, she says, I got a sweet deal for you. When was the last time you tried something so good and refreshing and wondered, could this be good for me? Well, Sharks, guess what? I created a product that was both good for you and tastes great at the same time. I wanted the Sharks to know that my company isn't just your average lemonade stand. It's a lemonade stand that's trying to make a measurable impact on saving the bees. That's right. She's out to save the bees. She was and is the face of the brand. The sweetest little thing in the world. It's a deal. Yeah. I think that he believed that even though I was only nine and even though my business was small that he could turn it into a big business i figured that she would go on to do bigger and better things if this didn't work and she's still just killing it before i went on shark tank i was in about 35 stores in austin only and now i'm in over 200 stores across the u.s i probably see her once every month and every time i'm just more and more impressed he's been a great mentor 
And even if he's really busy, he'll say, can I text you a little later? But he always responds. She has people like Starbucks and various other people interested in her and just phenomenal. And tonight, there's new buzz because Michaela's company just landed a national distribution deal to sell her lemonade in Whole Foods across the country and to serve me and the bees poolside at W Hotels. We've got some real great partners. I ask this question all the time. Are you ready to quit school and work full time? <laughs> and you mean it. You're oh, yeah. darn right I mean it. Michaela, what's your biggest challenge in your business right now? Probably fitting school and Bee Sweet Lemonade and all the other activities that I might want to do I think do you're together. right. School's got to go. When Kevin said drop out of school, I, I knew that that wasn't going to happen. It's certainly family first, but we understand as a family, we've got a commitment and, and we've got a passion. We've got a mission to grow the business. And it's amazing that she's able to balance this business that she's created while at the same time making straight A's. So I started off with flaxseed and honey and mint. Michaela still makes time for the personal sales pitch, a sort of lemonade stand at the local grocery store. Bye. Bye. She's a natural born salesperson. And then there were those three invites to the White House. I will be back on the job market, so I hope she is hiring. I have a lot of big, big dreams for me and the bees, and I want to take it step by step and day by day and see what comes our way. Would you like a cup? I love when the kids come in. I find it so inspiring. You've got a soft I, touch. If you don't come from an environment where your mom and dad are business people, or you don't know anybody who's a business person, how are you going to get ahead? Let me ask you about Bose Bose. He yes. marches in there and says he's going to be NBT. I believe I am an NBT, the next big thing. Did you just say NBT, next big thing? Yes. <laughs> My name is Mo Bridges, and I was on season five of Shark Tank. Swimming with the shark. I was about 11 years old when I went on. We asked Mr. Wonderful for $50,000, and he said, I don't want any equity in Moe's Bows. I want $3 every time you sell a tie. I was just like, uh, no. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. I thought, Mo will be 50 years old, still paying Kevin $3 a tie. That's insane. I strongly suggest you don't take on investors at this time. I will guarantee to mentor you, but I will not give you the money at this time. And I think the mentoring is way more valuable than the money. I felt a personal attachment at this point, so I wanted to mentor him. There was no deal for Mo, but Damon couldn't help falling in love with the boy in the bow tie from Memphis. A mentorship was born. Do you agree with that, Mo? Mo is the CEO, but I'm the CEO of Mo, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I got the mentor, which I think was the best thing that I could have got out of it. But damn, I'm on my way. He did bring me recently to New York, and he showed me where he lived when he was younger. This is the house that I was raised in. I think Damon was trying to teach me that we both came from the same background and that we can both do great things. If you forget where you came from, then you're really not going to have much direction of where you want to go. I'm going to end up working for this kid sooner or later. You already are. You showed up at the dressing room with the ties and tried to get me to buy. Moe's Bowl is made in America. Let me see. Let me see. Let's check this out. Ready? What do you think? Very studious of you. It becomes a challenge at times trying to keep a balance with Mo between work and his social life and, of course, school. What about this, Mo? Not for spring? Whether it's picking out swatches over eggs and bacon or making sure Mo's bows are front and center at this department store. And now we have Mo. Mo and his bows are always on the go. When people come in, they see the ties, and we tell them about them, they say, are those the ties from the little boy that's on Shark Tank? When I walk into a department store and I see Moe's Bows next to these big brands, I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe. And tonight, we celebrate Moe because he's just signed a deal to make his bow ties for the NBA. And he served up a warning shot to that NBA owner. Better watch out, Mark Cuban. <laughs> The CEO of Neiman Marcus calls. I haven't been able to sell food with Neiman Marcus since day one. I go, hi, how you doing? She's like, can I speak to Mo? I'm like, here, Mo, here's the phone. Wait, 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 I was gonna say, you didn't get him into Neiman Marcus. He got, he got himself. himself into Neiman Marcus. And we have a message from Michaela Mazzion for you. Take a look. Hey, Mr. Damon, thank you for making such a big impact on my business. Damon, thank you for all the help and support that you've given me throughout my company. Congratulations, Sharks. Congratulations, Sharks. 
next. I'm one man trying to do his best for this country. The manufacturer in Asia could make it for $150. Right, can we take it overseas? No, sir. I'm out. From cake to claws to cargo holder, Let's go next. the Sharks switcheroo to Made in America. We continue now with Shark Tank on 2020. Welcome back. We're with the Sharks tonight. This is a blast. And this is one of our favorite topics, Made in America. We've been doing this for years at ABC. And the big question is, you're not only making profits, but you're creating jobs all across America. Have you noticed yourselves over the years of Shark Tank, the value, the premium put on those three words, Made in America? Well, look, initially, early on in the early days of Shark Tank, we got a lot of flack for always saying, you know, send companies overseas, make products overseas. There was Donnie McCall, who failed to get the sharks to bite on his folding cargo holder that hides right in your truck, the Invisirac, all because he wanted to make it in America. I'm one man trying to do his best for this country. Now, <laughs> I know a truck rack's not going to save the U.S. economy, but I want to do something that can bring some jobs and some hope to my small town. The sharks thrilled him. Let's just say for a sec that a manufacturer in Asia could make it. That puts you in business right now, my friend. Can we take it overseas? Yes, sir. Then I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Donnie, you yes, can't sir. solve the problem we're talking about here. I believe I can make it. I know I can. And we went to find him in Sparta, North Carolina. Hey, nice to meet you. See you. See you too. We don't know what those sharks were thinking. Showing us how it works. Even we could put it together. Clamps go next. Every piece made here. Looks good. Thanks, I appreciate it. And it turns out, after the show... It's all sold out after the all show. All sold out. A year later, Donnie found help elsewhere. Here we have some inventory. Hey, this is awesome. I currently have hundreds of people on a waiting list. I believe the sky's the limit. We learned very quickly that you can make so many more products than we really expected here in America. Being close to market matters. You can't make food goods in China and ship them to America. That makes no sense. Look who's in the pantry. Then there was Kevin with his wicked good cupcakes, the sweet deal all made right outside Boston. Come to mama. <laughs> and boy, he did. Can I have a jaw? Is that his jaw? Jaw. I love your accent. This is a cupcake in a jar. Oh, it's more than that, my friend. <laughs> says the businessman. <laughs> Wicked Good Cupcakes went from two employees to 46. I want to ask about one of my favorites, Daisy Cakes. My company is Daisy Cakes. Mm. And of all the panel, the shark that said, this is the best cake I've ever had. Best uh, cake I've ever had? Yeah. Really? It's sitting right here. How did you know, Barbara? Well, I knew because each of these guys were sleeping on the job. They never even finished swallowing, and they never made a bid. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. Fantastic, by the way. One thing you noticed was that everyone passed on that. But then you looked at all the sharks, and they were still finishing the cake. After each of these guys dropped out, they bent forward, I noticed, and had another bite. Do we have a deal? Of course. Yes, ma'am. You know why? Because in the end, actions always speak louder than words. I went to meet Kim and Geraldine. Hey! Oh, oh I got a hug! Oh. I'll never forget the Southern charm. They met me at the door of their small little the real kitchen. Deal. But one of the incredible things about this was that this was a family recipe they'd been sitting on for years, and they turned it into an amazing profit machine. And on this day, they were revealing to us their red velvet cake. This will be fun. <laughs> she says now. <laughs> wow, it smells so good. How am I doing, Geraldine? Thumbs up. <laughs> All the while, Mom Geraldine watching from the corner, a thumbs up. Oh, we're proud of her. You're proud of her? Yeah. They only had $30,000 in sales over four years when they came on Shark Tank, and now they're bordering on $8 million. Remarkable story, but so deserving wow. of that success. Let me ask you about Cousins Maine Lobster. $55,000 for 15%. Barbara, welcome to the family. <laughs> Thank you. Come on over Come here. Right here. I like those guys. They are good looking. <laughs> yeah, we can tell you like those They are. Guys, Barbara. Okay. <laughs> and they flirt with me, and even when they, they take photos of us together, they have the decency to airbrush my face and make me look their age. You don't get those out your mouth. Well, that's a big get, you know? But more importantly, they make me a lot of money because they have $8 million in sales, and they have 27 food trucks. And, and that was your opening. suggestion. Of course, I'm a genius. You don't know you're looking at a genius? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
They have retail the first shop, and they're going to open the next six. I don't think when we started out with one food truck in Los Angeles that we thought that it would grow and manifest into this. And in doing so, we certainly didn't believe that we'd start creating jobs. I think that's an important thing to say. That I think that uh, Shark Tank has created around 10,000 jobs. At least, yeah. Has um, it really? It has. Yeah, but David, back to me. What else do you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you sharks is ready to get your groove on? With Groovebook! This was one of these great investments that turned into a great company. Billions of photos are taken every day from smartphones. Who doesn't have a phone with hundreds, if not thousands of photos? What do people do with all the photos they've taken? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. nothing! Their solution? Take all of those photos on your phone and upload them. And they'll print them right here in the U.S. in this book and ship them to you for $2.99 a month. I think it's a phenomenal idea. Thank you. Kevin and Mark offer to go in on a deal together. I'm all about making win-win situations. Do you accept their offer? Yes, we yes, do. We Let's go to work. Congratulations. And listen to this. Groovebook became the biggest company sale ever for Shark Tank because of what happened next. Once they were up and running, they then sold their company to a bigger one, a powerhouse, Shutterfly buying them for $14.5 million. We had to meet them. Yeah, not bad hanging out with a couple of millionaires. <laughs> and we asked, where did they get the idea in the first place? They revealed it was all because mom lost her phone and all of those photos of the children on it, right down to their youngest, and that first tooth lost. The image of it lost for good, too. So technically, the tooth fairy brought $14 million. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could look at it that way. And we asked the CEO of Shutterfly at the time if he knew that this mom and dad would be trouble. Tough competition, they didn't make an offer. Now, if you didn't invest in them, do you think you would have been competing with them? We would have. And the Sharks point out that it's often just one technical tweak that can set your idea apart from the rest, even if there are other similar ideas out there. He figured out how to put it in a flexible envelope where the shipping costs were $2 less per unit. How much would it cost to send it if it wasn't flexible? $3. $3. And now that I can do this, it's 80 cents. 80 cents, yes. And that's why it got acquired for 14 and a half million cash that's from Shutterfly. Unbelievable. In 11 months. It just shows you should never give up and pursue your dreams. Another one of the companies that you invested in, our Riveter. Each our Riveter handbag tells a story. Leather and canvas is cut, liners are sewn, all at the hands of our nation's military spouses across the country. Our Riveter is about empowering military spouses and redefining the boundaries of American manufacturing. I'm an Army brat, oh, so I are. know that, you know, a lot, we get carted around all over the world from Army base to yep. Army base. It's hard for the spouses of these officers exactly. to get jobs. They figured out that they can take the design and start shipping it to the wives of servicemen wherever they may happen to be across the country. And one woman will sew on the label, then they'll ship it, and then another person will put in the stitches, and then they'll ship it until it's a complete bag. And tonight, they tell us those bags just passed $1 million in sales. It's literally made with love, made with patriotism, so I couldn't be any prouder of them. Next. Shame on you. Shame on you. Where's your eject button? When the sharks turn on each other. What's the longest you went without talking to another shark? As long as possible. <laughs> shark fights. Dollars and cents aside, what do the sharks have to say about each other? I don't think any of the sharks would have anything bad to say about each other. That being said. <laughs> This greedy savage, his deal is horrible. Bam, Kevin. We're like this one big dysfunctional family. Not everybody is super aggressive, full of themselves like you. Okay. And, but a lot of times it looks on the show like you're angry at each other. Absolutely we're angry. Yeah. Do your own deal, right? I made an offer. Silence while I bring out the genius of my offer. Oh, we're to sharks. Her. That's what we do. In that moment, we we're are literally angry. all trying that's, to beat That's each why other you don't see the cameras. It's our real money, and we're fighting for a deal that we think is gonna work. And you know what? We're competitive. We like to win. Yeah, you think? Todd, I'll take that deal. Wait, we didn't I'm hear a big it. guy. 375,000, 25%. Do we have a deal? Wait. Done. <laughs> While we were talking, we shouldn't have been talking. Wow. There's been times where we go at it, like, and then after that deal is over, you don't want to talk to the other shark that got it. It's just like, leave me alone. Yeah, don't yeah, talk to me. Down the road, your angriest moment. When a guy came out and Lori made a deal because it was a charity. Oh. Remember that? I'm going to make you an offer right now. 
I'm, I'm a very charitable guy too. Sometimes it's about helping America and making the is world a, a better place. Is it a charity? that is such crap. Yeah, no, it is you, not, not crap. We are not the charity tank. You know what? You're really pissing me off right now. <laughs> I'm going to say something rude to you. No, and don't. I don't want to say something because rude you're to you. Not a rude so I'm guy. just going to go. Okay? Because I. There was yes, no need to do, do something that, like that. You should do that, but that's actually not you. You're smarter than You're that. not the guy to walk away and walk off. Everybody later that day was like texting and going, you okay, you okay? <laughs> What's the longest you went without talking to another shark? As long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> really? It sticks with you that long sometimes. No. I've never been taking the pass after the next pitch. I used to get very, very angry at Kevin because you used to be very rude to people. Not at all. Yeah. If you were in one of my business school stop classes, being mean to her. I would spray you down with water, and every time you say, I don't know, I'd hit you with an electric cattle prod. <laughs> Over the years, we've figured out Kevin is just a cartoon character. So I don't get all this kumbaya stuff. Oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Frankly, if you can't take me in the shark tank, the real world is going to eat you alive. I had to force 40,000 down his throat like a goose. For While these sharks may bare their teeth at each other, they can often be caught just having fun. All right, kiss, 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 kiss. That's tasty. And may occasionally give another shark some credit. Who's the smartest among you? Oh, I am. I'll, I'll take that. Easy, I am. I'll take that. <laughs> no, I think Mark is the smartest. Really? He's a great people judge. And he also knows finance and technology. What a winning combination. And look, at he's falling for what I'm dishing out here. Absolutely. <laughs> Does Damon have the biggest heart? Yeah, I would say Damon. Yeah, I'd go with Damon. One of my favorite episodes involved you going back to the green room and explaining a deal. The entrepreneur, Billy Blanks Jr. He was homeless at a point. His wife and him, you know, just really, uh, you know, struggled. This is the motel that we actually stayed at when we had lost our home. The product, a dance fitness system. The negotiation, an exercise in frustration. Uh, you know, I don't think it's the right deal to do. <gasps> All right. We wish you the best, Billy. Good luck and he turns down the deal. Thank you guys so but much Damon felt here. Blanks misunderstood the terms of his offer. And I felt so compelled, and I went back. Where are you going? I'm gonna do the deal. I've never done this before. And you reconsider the deal because you make me wanna help you. It was a very emotional moment for me, I almost cried. You don't realize what this means to us, that you're coming to us? It means a lot to me as well. Step. And <laughs> I will definitely take that Don't make deal. me cry. I'm you sorry, but I will definitely take that deal. Let me get my sweat on you, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, Mike. All right, guys, thank you. Tell them thank you. I will do. Thank you. <laughs> but you know what really made you go out running after that guy? He was genuine. He was the real he deal. He had a big heart. I'm so proud of you. Damon talks about the power of broke. We've all been broke. I've had my lights turned off. I've had credit cards cut up. I mean, you have to go through it. Cuban himself once sold garbage bags door to door as a kid. Robert Hershevik did time waiting tables. And Damon John had worked as a flight attendant. As for Barbara Corcoran, she went through 20 jobs by the time she was 23. Lori Grenier tried playwriting while she sold her own jewelry on the side. And Kevin O'Leary got his start scooping ice cream. Every shark has spent a lot of time eating mac and cheese somewhere in their lives before they ever got to eat a steak. That's the bottom line. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that makes it a special ride because we can understand the people that are sitting in front of us and exactly that they're eating mac and cheese too. And it isn't steak time for them no. yet. Next, from rags to riches. We've all failed a thousand times empty buildings to full of stock. You only have to be right once. So for all the people out there, what's the one thing you would tell them to make it happen?